leopards are cartographers even if you put like a physical boundary it means nothing i mean how is a leopard going to say this wall is where i'm supposed to belong on this side of the wall and that side of the wall is like not mine no point i think has there been where leopards haven't crossed those boundaries and so like those boundaries are created by us it's our boundary humans are like no no you can't come beyond this wall a lot of the boundary issues are by people they are the ones who have set these physical boundaries of you can do this you can't do this and the leopard doesn't understand that i am shweta shivkumar i work at the center for wildlife studies i am a doctoral fellow uh, and i'm registered at uh, manipal university and i'm in my second year doing my phd I work on human leopard interactions and this has been the topic I've been working on since 2014 and it's been amazing to work in Himachal Pradesh that is my field site I actually started off doing my bachelor's in microbiology and I wasn't very happy with uh, studying small animals and so what I thought was that I wanted to work on wild animals where I can feel the connect and uh, that's all that's about all i knew so when i was doing my masters in environmental science uh, i picked a project which uh, gave me that kind of uh, feeling about working with wild animals and uh, so i walked into the forest office and i sort of wanted to know uh, what i can do like i just wanted project ideas and so i approached the forest official and then i told him that um, So I'm this student I'm very interested in wild animals and is there any project that I can do and so he's like yeah yeah there are compensation records that you can look at where uh, there are elephants or leopards that have caused damage to people and uh, they've claimed uh, money for it and so he showed me the records and like elephants had like about 20000 uh, people who had been attacked and uh, like leopards had about i think 25 30 and so i'm like so i have two months <laughs> i have to work on something and so uh, i worked on leopards uh, and i'm glad i picked leopards out of my laziness or whatever but um, it's through the stories of the people who i interviewed i found uh, the life of a leopard very interesting i mean they come into human areas and that's how i began my career in wildlife i think yeah So leopards are uh, extremely adaptable. Among all of the large carnivores, I think leopard is found more in human areas than in forests. I mean, most part of the range, but eighty percent of the range, at least in the Indian subcontinent, is in human-dominated landscapes, and uh, they will only survive if the people living with the leopard are willing to. There is going to be no leopard in human dominated areas or leopards if people don't want them there. And at some level that level of acceptance tolerance you can call it whatever uh allows the leopards to be there and so conservation in terms of leopard at least is about working with the people actually. It's about the stakeholders about the people who live with leopards that are like more important to work with and so i think it's very important that you first study what the status of the leopards uh is in that particular study site look at the people who are living there and then work on conservation action human leopard interactions actually is two three types and uh i work on the people's aspect of it i'm trying to see how uh how much damage the people have had because of leopards being in their area and that could be in terms of injury to them it could be in terms of uh, livestock attacks that because leopards have uh, attacked their livestock and eaten it so that's part of their livelihood or it can also be uh, sometimes property damage because they come in through the roof of the livestock shed and things like that and there's also uh, another type of attack that is for elephants so it's not human leopard interactions human animal interactions they have crop damage if in terms of elephants so uh, there's also psychological damage like when people are uh, living with these animals there's a lot of stress to their uh, mind about how they have to stay up at night and like maybe guard their livestock or 
or their crops and so my work focuses on the human attacks people who've been attacked by leopards and how it has affected them and what are the circumstances of these uh, attacks that have happened and i try to do the spatial analysis about trying to see if there are any hot spots where these attacks have occurred so that is uh, the major focus of my research Uh, so I started off working on uh, human-leopard interactions through the state of Himachal. And in Himachal, it has been uh, in one region, at least only on the northern part, is where snow leopards are present. Every other area, uh, like almost 11 out of 12 districts have leopards. And so what I did was I got compensation records. I uh, interviewed the people, around 350 people who've been attacked by leopards. and. I wanted to know what happened the day they were attacked. I wanted to know what exact area that attack had happened. Like I wanted to know, they took me to the area where that attack happened. And so that is where yeah, the study site is. So initially it was all over Himachal, but then we had uh, two different uh, focus areas. And we wanted to know in areas where there are high attacks, like spatially we could see a lot of attacks over the years. Is there any different? Like, uh, and another was the administrative capital, which is Shimla. So we focused a uh, few activities around these two study regions. The kind of stories that people tell us about leopards is uh, very interesting. They talk about how the leopard would escort everyone home, see them home safely. And these are the kind of stories you hear from like really old people. Through these uh, mythos, through these religious and cultural context, you get to know that these leopards have been in that landscape forever. It really depends on the kind of interaction that that village has had at that moment. But uh, there's also definitely if there's a kid who's been attacked, there have been a few cases in Himachal where a kid was picked up from the house and that definitely makes you angry. I mean. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of leopards have been uh, found dead due to poison, due to snaring and uh, that's, that is there, that is not something that uh, we can deny. And so I feel like it's very variable depending on the kind of incident that has happened in that area. So there was this one mother that I interviewed whose kid unfortunately had been attacked by a leopard. And uh, when I did interview her, she was crying and, and when uh, she was recounting what had happened to uh, her son, she was telling me that, uh, yes, I know that the it, it had been two years also. So two years ago, uh, my son was attacked. Uh, but yes, it caused me a lot of grief. But I do not blame the leopard for uh, whatever that has happened. The leopard does what the leopard does. But yes, it caused me a lot of grief to have lost my son. And that is something that I, I could never imagine a mother telling me. I mean, she has every reason to hate the leopard. She would want to, nobody will bl blame a grieving mother for, uh, I don't know, hating the leopard. But I, there would, and there is no reason for her to tell me that she, that she doesn't hate the leopard. And that was something that really touched me. <laughs> Um, so I think this was done by uh, Dhi. She was doing one uh, study of how people feel about leopards. And what she found was that she, uh, she would go around asking people, so do you like leopards? Have you seen them? So what is it? And there was this one guy who uh, told her that there are actually di two different leopards. I mean, it's not, he wouldn't say leopards. It's called Tendua and uh, Mirk. So the local, leopard that they are used to, that they know does nothing, is called the Mirk. Mirk is like this one who like comes around with them in the forest, does not harm them and is of Apna leopard. And there is this other uh, leopard which is the Tendua, which is the dangerous one. And that is the one which attacks people and does all of these bad things and that is the one which has been uh, sometimes has been introduced by the forest department just so they don't cut firewood in their area and so all of these negative connotations were associated with the Tendua and the Mirg is different, Mirg is Apna. So I found that really interesting because in their head they're trying to segregate, it's not all bad. They're saying that the leopard is 
not all bad i have actually grown up in the urban areas and i have never had interesting stories about meeting wildlife in my backyard except birds and when i would talk to people in himachal it would be an everyday reality for them it would be something that would be like my neighbor went to marriage and yesterday i saw a leopard and it would be something along the same lines for them it was like an everyday reality and that was something that i i don't know i wish for everyone in india i don't know if they want it but uh, that is something that could be the future for a lot of people and i i don't think urban spaces are very far off for example sanjay gandhi national park it's high density of people living around this tiny park there are like uh, a group called the mumbai curse for sgnp who are citizens of that area they're not they're uh, just common people who have day jobs but then they have this group that actually educates people about how to live with leopards and we can all do that and uh, for a while before i got into this field I, i didn't think it possible that everyone can live with wildlife but i think it is possible in india at least and this other story so when we were camera trapping in uh, shimla we were setting up cameras to uh, photo trap leopards and we wanted to know how many leopards there were in that landscape and we went around asking people does the leopard come around your house because that that was very common for people of shimla they knew that the leopard came outside their house and they would say yeah yeah i'll help you put the camera so there was this one man uh, who said yeah yeah the there's a leopard that comes there's a tiger there's one without any spots also that comes i mean there are like so many varieties just put your camera outside my house and you will get like even pumas <laughs> and we're like pumas he's like yeah yeah the one you see on national geographic you'll definitely get them outside my house also and at some point i think we realized that there's not just like one leopard in people's lives for them it doesn't matter like scientifically we call it panthera pardus fusca but for people it is the animal outside their house that is walking by that does nothing and it doesn't matter if it has stripes or if it has spots but for them it's their leopard in that territory and so we never went to question him or show him there is only one leopard i mean he can it is his belief of that landscape and that is something that we learned through our study as well that a lot of people have their own stories about uh leopards in their surrounding for example there is also this one um myth that people talk about uh, the billy being the masi of the leopard masi is the maternal aunt and so the billy the cat is the one who taught the leopard how to hunt and the cat is the one who said that you have to like bite the animal on the throat and not at the nape of the neck and these are the kind of stories that make people connect with the leopard in their backyard and i think it's very important that we also learn these stories it is very easy to answer that question with the fact that i was a woman working there but in himachal i did not uh, i would like to stress that uh, there is at no time in my whole field work that did i feel that me being a woman affected the kind of data or the kind of interaction that i had with people in fact they were so welcoming and that could have been a challenge and it could have been if it was some other state where i felt unsafe i don't think i could have continued to work there but uh, i think the people of himachal really turned that challenge on its head and uh, made the whole project like very free flowing and that could have been one of the challenges that we faced but for me it was also the fear of heights and uh, a lot of people live uh, in I think the ridge area of so trying to get from the road to their house would always be this very steep path and uh walking up is also it takes a lot of lung capacity which I didn't have when I started field work so I think it uh made me fit <laughs> so over the course of doing all the interviews uh I learned how to walk without looking at uh, the bottom part of the mountain and go up so that i think would just be the challenge that i faced other than that even the forest uh, officials the people that i interacted with were extremely helpful for the whole project so i didn't face that many challenges the only one challenge i think I've, any conservationist will tell you is a big deal is funding 
and funding is very variable for such projects and that was the case even for the Himachal project. Even though the work was going, everybody was willing, the money was not uh, flowing in for very long. Uh, so the forest department has uh, various avenues to react to uh, any emergency situation such as a human attack or a livestock attack or, or a leopard in a village area. If people have spotted a leopard, how you react? So uh, these protocols are very set and haven't changed in a very long time. And one of them is the compensation policy that takes a little while. Uh, maybe like a month to get through the whole proceedings and stuff but also if, if a leopard is spotted in a village setting that the people don't want there what they do uh, do is set up trap cages capture the leopard and then release it in another area or like take it to the zoo and uh, we have seen that that really doesn't work in terms of reducing the conflict in the area it actually many times increases it and uh, so these are the various avenues in which the forest department will respond to uh, situations regarding the leopard. And, but there are uh, many initiatives that they are taking such as uh, helping research projects like ours work because my project initially was funded by the forest department. Also they do have a lot of talks uh, given to the forest officials training programs that they do have uh, avenues where they train the officials on how to respond to emergency situation because a lot of times it's also crowd control and that is something that uh, the people in Himachal already know. Since the research that I was doing was sometimes traumatic for people to recount because a lot of times I was interviewing mothers whose kids have been attacked by leopards so I think it definitely gave room for me to learn empathy and uh, there were a lot of times where I, I wanted to stop the interview because I could see that it was affecting them but they didn't. They wanted to get it out, they wanted to talk to me about what had happened that day and since I was listening that is all they wanted. Uh, I, I did not expect that. I actually expected a lot of people to just send me outside their door but uh, all of the people, none of, I never got uh, rejected for an interview. When I approached them, I told them I wanted to talk about what happened that day. They welcomed me, gave me chai, gave me too much chai. And there was always uh, this welcoming, aap mehman hai. Even though I didn't know uh, the language all that well, because I'm from Bangalore, I don't know the language, the local language. There was, in no way did they make me feel unwelcome. And so it was always this uh, feeling of that I do want to talk about what happened and I am going to give you this interview. So I've, yeah, that has been the response from the people who have been attacked by leopards and that's saying quite a lot. I think I like leopards. <laughs> I do want uh, everyone to at some point in life experience seeing a leopard. Every time I've seen a leopard, I feel fear. I can see that that animal is extremely powerful and I can see that if the animal wanted to kill me, it can kill me in a second. And the fact that a leopard will just walk away from you 99 times out of 100 times you see it, it talks about something about the animal's uh, fear in us as well. And they are afraid of humans. Their first reaction is to go away from a human. It's not to attack people. And that is something that we all, at, through our experience in life, learn. So that, was, that has been my biggest takeaway. If a leopard wanted to attack people, a lot more people would have been attacked. But that's not the case. Uh, so um, my plan, my trajectory in the career as well as this, to take forward this work is to make it into a policy. Because I've spent so many years trying to identify what are the uh, problem areas where we can sort of improve all of this that uh, has been happening to people, ensure people's safety and conserve leopards. Putting this resource into use means making it into a valid policy document that everyone in the state of Himachal can use. And uh, I can see that we can do capacity building for the forest officials and 
there uh, they are extremely good at handling these situations by themselves because they have good relations with the people and they have experience working with leopards but a little bit of training could also do good and so trying to make use of my research for the uh, people of himachal is where i see this going so yeah so currently in the field of conservation there is a slow shift towards uh, looking at people so the kind of when we say human leopard conflict or human elephant conflict we're always talking about conflict between the animal and the person but uh, a lot of the conflict is actually between people and it can be between conservationists it can be between the conservationist and the forest department or the local community and a lot of times these conflicts are not looked at these are they are a lot of studies are now focusing on it but i feel a lot more studies can uh, work on conservation conflict between people and uh, it is extremely interesting how stakeholders when they have a conflict they can blame it on an animal and it is a huge uh, research interest that a lot of people are not focusing on and i feel like it's very uh, not highlighted so yeah i wish a lot more people would work on people people conflicts <laughs> So being an Indian uh living with wild animals I mean we don't realize how many wild animals we live with uh even urban there are lots of birds that I can point out in your backyard if even if you're living in the most biggest concrete jungle of India but you definitely in the Indian culture have had interactions with wildlife but that is not the case for a lot of countries in the world and we don't realize that we're very fortunate i think we'll only realize it when they're lost and that applies to leopards i mean if if a person who is in shimla on mall road can see a leopard i think there is hope for a lot of people to i mean see leopards and not have anything happen to them and appreciate the beauty of this i mean beautiful feline so yeah that is like the future message for me if if you are an indian and you you know that you're living with these wild animals i mean you should consider yourself extremely lucky and it should like go off into the next generation as well <laughs>